What up, players? It's me, Necromancer Lewis up in this mug. Empire Schmempire, let's unbox this mortis engine. That's right, players. I cast my magic spell, the dance macabre, and now I'm making Warbosh Tay film and unbox this new kit from Games Workshop. He's sleeping right now. Don't tell him that I took control of his body to make this video. So the kit comes in this box in two frames with a tiny little bitty third frame extra. I'm gonna get out of frame now. Speaking of frames and sprues, I'm gonna get out of the camera frame so Warboss Tay, in a hypnotic voice, can tell you what's on this mortise engine and how to build it. Thank you, Lewis. That's right, players. It's the Mortis Engine and Coven Throne unboxing for the Vampire Counts Army. There are two large frames as Lewis, who's so handsome and powerful and smart, said. And then there's a third mini frame here. Let's zoom out so we can see these frames a little bit better. Here are some Empire troops that I painted. And Empire is lame and stupid and nowhere near as cool as Vampire Counts. Here's the base. It's a big monster base. Kind of like the or chariot base actually, rather. And um, let us now take a look at each sprue and what comes on it. Big sprue number one has lots of this ethereal spectral pieces. Look at the detail. It is simply amazing. This guy looks a lot like the Cairn Wraith and these definitely look like skulls floating in midair, trailing ethereal gas and whatnot. This head looks a lot like a Vampire Count Skeleton head. I might be painting them, some of these, not as ethereal, but as having manifested physically. That is an option that I definitely might pursue. I like this half-formed skull head in there, and I like how this one looks like it's screaming after it had some bad tacos. Here is the piece that connects to the base and these slot into each other. Obviously when painting these I will be doing them in sub-assemblies. This piece I believe goes on the back. Here you have some more um, ethereal horsemen Here's a scary looking banshee that reminds me of my ex-girlfriend. And here is another one. Let's turn it over, shall we? You have skulls for the horsemen, but headless horsemen might be a cool option as well. I enjoy how these skeleton horses look much more vampire countish than the old ones. Oh my goodness. This is the head of a handmaiden. Lots to look at. Here is the head of another handmaiden, or maybe that is the vampire counts head vampire character who is riding. She looks very pretty and scary. You also have lances over Mia. 
That is screw number one. Now let us look at the screw with the options for coven thrown and get out of here pesky human mortis engine. No idea what this is but it looks pretty rad. You have skulls because skulls are the best thing ever. Ooh, dress for vampire. Handmaiden. Lots of arms. Here are the steps. That looks pretty gothic. If I was a parent of a 12 year old boy who bought this as a present, I would be quite perturbed if I had no idea what this hobby was about. This looks like the Coven Throne because it's very sleek and uh, it's very strange and got lots of curves and <coughs> weirdness going on. Or it could be the Mortis engine. Who knows? Here is the shrine thing at the back. That is pretty awesome. And a skeleton that probably did not think that one day it would be on the back of a book. Pillows for the vampires. That is pretty awesome. And the vampire pieces. A little fountain of blood. Which is pretty gross. Where is Lewis 3.0? Hmm. Lewis 3.0, where are you? I see your face. But I do not see your body. Where did your body go, Lewis 3.0? I think one of these might be it. Numbers on the frames are very helpful for when you're building them. And like I said before, this project is probably going to be done in sub-assemblies. This definitely looks like the Mortis engine piece. These spikes here, I'm looking at the third half of frame. And um... ex-girlfriend again lots of skulls this build looks like it's going to take a while and you also have three floaty skulls that can go in various places on your model oh as well as spooky lights here and here the tip of a scythe where is the rest of it I don't know and what looks to be two hands holding two knives. I don't get it. That must go somewhere. Finally, let's take a look at the instructions, shall we? It is the thickest set of instructions I have ever seen. It unfolds and is very big and bigger than I can show you but it looks very well organized and detailed and you can see what goes where and as well as where the contact points are between the different pieces well I guess I'm going to build it up now Louis is there anything else you'd like to point out before we go off and build our mortise engine? Well, does this get off my lawn? <clears throat> okay, so I'm building up my mortise engine according to this thing, and it says you're actually supposed to glue these two pieces, uh, piece number 22 and 23 together, and then when you put it on to this piece, um, it's gonna 
it's, it's gonna be glued eventually onto the main piece. But what I found was that um, this is the piece right here. And when you glue it where it says to be glued onto this guy on this side, then um, there's no way that you can get in to paint this side of the horse or conversely this side of of the horse in front of it. So it, um, I, it's a weird design choice that I kind of wish they wouldn't have done that way because it seems like it's just going to be harder to paint for um, people who have painted it than, um, and follow these instructions. Maybe you could leave me some insight to that. But um, what I find interesting is that uh, I guess this is where the site is going to go. <clears throat> um, they have these guide, they have these guides, like little holes, and then right next to it, little nubs that fit into corresponding holes and nubs on the opposing side, right here. You can see. So when you put a little bit of plastic cement or plastic glue, whichever you're using, then you can really easily slap them right in where they're supposed to go. Uh, just want to make sure, as always, that you do a little test fit, dry fit first, before you put the glue in because you don't want to glue this uh, onto the, the wrong guide hole, I guess. Um, but great detail. I mean, the spectral, spiritual, uh, ethereal mob of just menacing, floating, stuff is just like unbelievably well detailed so kudos <coughs> GW and I'm gonna keep building up this keep building this guy up okay so we got a lot to look at here um, so let's take a look this is the one of the side pieces I believe this is the right side piece uh, ease of assembly you know what it's as well explained as the directions are there are so many little fiddly bits shields and weapons and skulls that are not like regular skeleton vampire count skeleton skulls these only come with like half of the the actual back of the skull molded on and then there's a flat surface that you're supposed to glue to the back uh, where there's a flat joining surface uh the cairn rates this um this scythe was kind of hard to put on um, but you know the black knight looking guys at the front i mean whoever sculpted this was just like okay what are the coolest things in our vampire counts range right now let's just put them all together so you've got skeletons mixing it up with cairn wraiths mixing it up with black knights and you know, just all sorts of different weapons and and shield combinations and you've got these random floating skulls that uh, you can glue anywhere so I put this one over here to make it look like it's kind of breaking off from the rest of the crowd you can kind of see it from overhead and just glue the tail end of it to one of the trailing tendrils so I think that's gonna be a pretty cool effect when that's painted up <coughs> so that's one side of the spirit host and here is the other I believe yeah actually I think that was the left and this is the, or that was the right and this is the left so you've got armor and weapons, black knight looking guys. Um, most of these look like pretty similar to what you find on the vampire counts skeletons unit. So uh, it's pretty cool, it's recognizable. You, you don't really recognize it though when, when you see it all painted up because the Games Workshop web um, uh, heavy metal team kind of paints it up so that the entire thing just has this weird green glow to it. I might, um, I might do mine up a little bit different. Here's another cool looking Karen Wraith. Um, what I might do is paint all the tendrils as green, greenish blue, ethereal, and then paint the actual models of the spirit host um, as if they've uh, materialized. And uh, I think that might be interesting. Uh, and then, what else do you have? We've got the, this part here, the main, I guess, chariot piece. Since I'm using this as a mortise engine, you've got the book in the front. Um, these were pretty fiddly because all of these skulls come separately, so you have to cut them off of the sprue and clean them off, clean off the mold lines and glue them on. Um, I like the real gothic look of the spikes at the top. Very Bram Stoker's Dracula, uh, Francis Ford Coppola 
Gary Oldman. You've got uh, two really cool looking lights down the back and just a lot of cool detail down here that you know you don't really notice. The vertebrae spine of the of the chariot itself. <coughs> and here in the front I really like all these obviously skulls um, packed into the the masonry and the stonework so that looks really cool. And um, I decided to keep this piece off. Take a little bit of a look at it. Uh, just so that it's easier to paint. Reliquary? Re relic Reliquary? Whatever it's called. And then once it's painted, it's just gonna slot in right there in the back. But I don't want to glue it in because then I would have a hard time painting the back gate. I'd have a hard time painting the back of this thing, so. Sub assemblies, my friends. You got three lovely ladies who we're going to paint separately and then glue as if they're flying around the top. This touch I think was really cool, having three banshees, howling banshees as it were, um, like flying around the top. Uh, this one looks very Japanese with the, the hair in the face, Japanese horror movie. And uh, finally, you've got this guy who's going to be standing on the front. I was thinking, you know, if you don't decide to use this as a mortise engine, you want to use it as a coven throne, you get a nice extra master necromancer for your army. Um, he's really meant to fit this way. There's only three pieces to his body, and there's only one way that you can glue him together, so you can't pose him any way you want. And the robes are really meant to fall off the front of the, of the stairs. Some, somewhat like uh, like this, I suppose. Um, but I'm thinking that you could also glue him onto a base if you just like trim off the front of his robes, or you could even build him a special base out of cork that utilizes this flowy robe-looking thing. So um, there you have it. Difficulty to put together. I'm gonna put all the pieces back on the table to show you just how much work. It took me a couple nights, I mean I wasn't working on them the whole time, but it took me a couple of nights to get all this done because there's a lot of cleaning, especially with the these spirit host things in the front. There's a lot of cleaning you have to do, there's a lot of mold lines that you gotta clear away, so definitely not um, <clears throat> one of the easier sets to put together. And it's gonna stay in sub-assemblies till it's all painted, just so that we can reach all the little nooks and crannies. Um, but um, let's look at amount of detail. I would give it an A plus because look, you've got banshees, you've got Karen raids, you've got everything in the new range. You've got the old-looking skeleton models. So the older range, you've got Black Knight models. I mean, whoever sculpted the spirit host part of this was really into that, um, getting everything he could packed into the, the the ethereal spirit host part at the bottom of the of the chariot. So detail A plus. Um, what's left on the sprues is actually we should take a look at that. Okay, so in the this uh, last part we're taking a look at the sprues. You get one skull off of this half a sprue, and if you build the mortise engine, you also get the backing for um, the coven throne, which has a little bit more. Um, it has this. Oops, sorry. Let's see if we can find it. It has this padlock with some skeleton hands that attach to. I'm assuming uh, some of these pieces. Coven throne has much more. Um, I'm gonna say just sleek and like luxurious, but still gothic horror. That kind of like skulls, but with style. You've got, of course, the handmaidens that we didn't use. Um, what I might try to do is build one of them up, one or two. And I've seen somebody, who, I, I don't know if I mentioned this in the other video, built one of these handmaidens up as uh, the Countess Emmanuel of Nuln um, on a horse because she's very, very stylish and stuff. So here's like the third handmaiden body here. Uh, various skulls littered around. Um, different pieces of skeleton architecture that were supposed to go on the Coven Throne that I wonder if you can add in other places in your army. Uh, here's a lady's head right there. 
and big blood droplet dresses, their arms and their hands. So I might I might do that. I, I might do like a a little Warbaste Studios update. <laughs> um, on this last sprue, all you've got really are two more heads. This big uh, Marie Antoinette one, who's like the queen bee vampire lady, and this other one right there. So, uh, options on the rest of the sprue, I want to say you don't really have much um, because they're so specific to doing the Coven Throne or the Mortis Engine on the other hand. Uh, I think the Mortis Engine is a little bit easier because the Necromancer is actually standing up and not kneeling on, her, on its side like the, like the Vampire or her Handmaidens are, so it's a lot easier to put together, but <clears throat> still yet, yeah, we'll see um, if I could use any of those. So, uh, I want to say, you know, details, extra bits for your bits box, maybe like a B or a C if I had to give it a letter grade, uh, since I work at a school, that's kind of what I do. Um, but yeah, like, like I said, mold lines, kind of hard just because there's so much, there's so much in this model, but detail, definitely A+. There's so much detail and it looks really great and I'm really looking forward to painting it up. So thanks for watching and um, Louis? you have anything you want to say to the good people before we wrap this video up?